This video is sponsored by Vitcher. More info later in the video. Ooh. Oh, what? <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Um, I gotta go. It might come as a surprise to you, based on the content I make, or used to make, that I love fighting games. I started playing them 14 years ago, back in glorious 2009, when my uncle brought home his copy of the now legendary Soul Calibur 4. Soul Calibur 4. Despite having zero experience at the time, getting my ass beaten and eaten by my uncle was always a consistent blast. He was also way better than me at Soul Calibur. I was infatuated by the animations, the character designs, Darth Vader. I ended up delving deep into each character's moveset and lore. Like, why in God's name is Starkiller in this roster? Why can't Zazmasol read? And what did G4 mean by this? And Ivy still looks like a transsexual hooker. I was fully in love, but none of my friends share the same sentiment. Whenever I brought a fighting game around, from Street Fighter to Mortal Kombat to Battle Construction Vehicles, every match would be completely one-sided, and they'd give me these awesome, cool new nicknames, such as Virgin, Sweat Lord, Sweaty Virgin, I Hate You, Fat Fuck, We're Gonna Torture You and Kill You, Fat Fuck. With my friends now completely turned off of the genre and my uncle doing 25 to life, I was left with no one to play with except for one or two weirdos. Oh, I thought you were gonna rage drive. Oh. If you're even mildly into fighting games, that story probably struck a chord with you. For the longest time, fighting games have been marked by the cursed brand of niche appeal with player bases that barely stack up against their contemporaries. I surveyed a bunch of people who either don't play them or tried them but got filtered what exactly made them pack it in to try and understand where these games fall short. I got a bunch of useful information that boiled down to the games are too complicated and they're bad at teaching you, they don't have enough content, and I don't like getting my shit rocked, and while all of these are valid, the same thing could be applied to a game like League of Legends, and yeah, I know it's free, but so is Killer Instinct, and that sure as shit ain't scratching those numbers, whether we're talking player base or million dollar prize pools, and that's where I come in. My goal today is to destigmatize fighting games and make them sound more appealing than the endless combo videos you see online, and ask someone who used to make Smite content, if you can tell me... What the fuck is happening on screen right now? You can throw a fireball. Make the first move, so what's the more fate? The trap in the new world is true by three. The third chapter, so what's the more fate? The trap in the new world is true by three. Make the first move, so what's the more fate? The trap in the new world is true by three. The third chapter, so what's the more fate? The third strike, y'all, a straight fighter three. Three, 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 three. The first thing we gotta tackle is why. There's a billion things I could be doing with my time. Why would I spend it playing fighting games? And the answer to that is complicated, full of nuance with many layers and ideas to deconstruct. Pretty tough to sell these games to people without just saying they're fucking radical. Featuring top tier character designs, positively juicing with personality, batshit insane storylines, and banging music, fighting games are the personification of smashing two dolls together, but like, really. And one of the dolls is Negan. It has all the appeal of World Star slash Live Leak videos without the jail sentence. Allegedly. I grew up collecting hepatitis from bootleg F-Zero cabinets at my local Portuguese arcade, and it feels like fighting games are one of the last bastions of that old-school vibe. Oh. Nowadays, you'll be hard-pressed to buy a modern release that even supports split-screen, because new video games need every inch of your processor to be able to load a single hair on Mr. Chief's foot. Fighting games, on the other hand, got foot specials, foot taunts, foot... foot... What the, the amount of half-circle orange to your mental damage you can cause with fighting games was more than enough to sell me on it. Trolling someone by learning the ins and outs of a circus freak and then beating them to death, to me, carries the same satisfaction as learning the outs and ins of a musical instrument. And then beating them to death.
And that's only one slice of the fighting game food metaphor, because it's not all about learning a set of complex systems, it's all about getting inside your opponent's head. Like this guy. What is he thinking? He's not even playing the game! He's playing them's fighting herds! I am so sorry. Have you ever wanted to run the set on the go, or found yourself thinking, Man, I really wish I was fighting a Wi-Fi Ken right now. Because now you can, by using today's sponsor, the Vitcher XR Glasses. Thanks, Vitcher. Allowing you to pair a device of your choice and have it streamed directly into the lenses. Hit the lab at any time, thanks to PS and Xbox Play, free for all neckband owners. Watch your favorite streamer in stunning, pixel-free 1080p at 60fps with no interruptions by triple-clicking the mode button, locking the screen in a fixed position of your choosing. Experience MKX's flawless animations by using the immersive color-changing film, letting you dim the background of the glasses at the press of a button, perfect for scenarios with different ambient light. I'm actually watching Family Guy right now. Or jam out to Luke's theme with a stunning audio experience provided by the built-in Harman speakers. Thanks, Capcom. And by using the adjustable myopia diopter to find the best visual setting, anyone can enjoy the glasses of tomorrow. Today, you can grab your own pair of the Vitcher XR glasses with a 10% discount by using my code at the link below. Thank you so much to Vitcher for sponsoring this video, which you can also watch by using your new pair of XR glasses. It's all about getting inside your opponent's head. Because even basic fighting games like Nidhogg or Sifu or Footsies have a million layers of mind games. And there's a shockingly wide variety to choose from, each with active and supportive communities, meaning that even if you bounce off of one, that doesn't necessarily mean you bounce off the entire genre as a whole. Don't want to learn combos? Try Samurai Showdown. Think Marvel is too fun? Try Dragon Ball Fighters. Don't have any money? You can refund Dragon Ball Fight. The best gateway drug I can recommend without dropping 60 bucks is watching any fighting game tournament, which is basically like UFC without the wife beating. Allegedly. Every summer, thousands of gamists congregate at the EVO Championship in Las Vegas. The biggest tourney of the year, and it's a joy to watch. From the blow-ups, to the rivalries, to the home, the room, or the $20 bathroom. I went to Amsterdam for the Tekken World Tour Finals with my friend Leon Massey that guy. And being in that crowd of potential predators as Gerlanda cleaned Nobi's cock out was life-changing. The match was pretty good, too. But I get it. Fighting games aren't exactly the most welcoming thing. It can be really intimidating to get into a genre where the outcome of a match relies entirely on you, the player. Especially if you're coming from a MOBA background or any team-based competitive game where there's a lot less pressure on how you perform individually. And especially considering most of these are free while the average fighting game costs 70 bucks. You're preaching to the gamer. But on the other hand, you don't run the risk of losing just because you got matched into a team of... You know, people who play MOBAs. I said GG five times, and now I'm banned from playing this stupid game. To quote Street Fighter professional Daigo Umehara, Getting good at fighting games is like repeatedly hitting yourself in the penis with a wooden mallet. Everyone has a different pain threshold, and not everybody is into getting hit in the dick in the first place. But if you persevere, no matter how flat your cock might get, eventually you'll fully understand the speed and weight of the mallet. And now it's your turn to start hitting other people in the penis with the wooden mallet. And the mallet is Negan. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend you haven't been down this road before. You watch a combo video on Twitter and decide to reinstall KOF 15, you do the tutorial, you hop online, and now you're on the receiving end of the mallet and you remember why it wasn't installed in the first place. This is IMTBHO, the absolute worst way to get started. But I don't blame you. This is neither your fault or the combo video's fault. Fighting game tutorials are simply complete dick. They'll cover basic mechanics like how to move around and the different types of Armenian cancels. They fool you into thinking you're ready and then kick you off to the fucking trenches, while core aspects like neutral and whiff punishing are left on the bus. They always teach you how to do the big combo, but they never teach you when to do the big combo. And even if they did, I'm not gonna read that shit. And even if I could read, fundamentals are nigh impossible to absorb without playing matches against real humans. And this may shock some 
humans, but I believe playing online against randos is a complete waste of your time. Don't get me wrong, ranked is fun if you want to flex a fucked up combo you practiced, or if you want to show off... Freddy Fazbear, but playing ranked when you're first starting out is a total fucking nightmare. You end up having to learn by trial and error since you and the other guy don't have a direct line of communication, which besides making the entire experience extremely frustrating, also removes one of the key aspects of fighting games, the shit talk. Oh, I'll kill you. I'll kill you in real life. No! Oh, let's go! Let's fucking go! This game sucks. This game fucking sucks. This game blows. This game actually just like takes bubbles from my asshole. Beating your opponent is one thing, but watching their soul leave their body as you hit them with the fourth wake up DP in a row is magical. No, no, no. Fighting games are ultimately extremely intimate, built on purely intrinsic motivation. Or whatever. I don't want to get better so I can beat some Somalian dude whom I'll never see again. I want to get better so I can beat my uncle whom I'll definitely never see again. But even that method isn't foolproof. From my experience, learning by playing against someone substantially better than me isn't great. Most people don't enjoy getting hit by the mallet for hours, or they don't enjoy fighting someone who they know is holding back. With all of that in mind, my recommendation for getting started without going fucking crazy is play the tutorial, pledge to my Patreon, don't touch practice mode, pledge to my Patreon, don't look at her feet, just get one of your friends to buy a fighting game with you and learn by beating the shit out of each other. If possible, have someone present who has some experience with the game to give you both tips on the fly. Having a sparring partner makes a huge difference. It alleviates all the competitive pressure from playing online since there's no leaderboards or ranks to worry about, and if you're falling for the same setups over and over again, you can just ask how to avoid them. The biggest game changer for me was when I stopped viewing it as a PvP experience but instead, as a co-op game, with both you and your friend having the same goal of helping each other get stronger. And when it works, it's beautiful. And when it doesn't work, it's because I am telling you the wrong throw break on purpose. This does mean that for my method to work, you need at least one friend. On the off chance that they're not keen, or you don't have any... Jesus Christ. Feel free to hit me up for some games at leonmasseybusiness at gmail.com. And I always reply within like 24 hours, so if you don't get a response, just keep sending them, you know, like over and over and over again. Uh, don't worry about the spam filter, because uh, it won't work if you're really tenacious. Yeah, that makes sense. Now you're probably asking yourself, Punk Duck, you're so hot and attractive, where were you during January? Which games should I start with? While my personal favorites are Tekken 7, King of Fighters 15, Soul Calibur 6, and Marvel 3, I would not recommend those to anyone diving into fighters for the first time. For that reason, I offer two paths. The first one is Street Fighter 6. Street Fighter 6. A fucking phenomenal game with outstanding value for your money and excellent learning tools, including an optional control scheme that simplifies inputs while still giving you full control over your character, letting new players learn the fundamentals of fighting games without being stun-locked by motion inputs. I cannot recommend it enough. The problem is, it's 60 bucks, which is way more expensive than any of the games I just mentioned, which is why I offer a second path, Dive Kick. Dive Kick! It's a two-button fighter, you die in one hit, and all you can do is jump and kick. And it's somehow one of the best games I've ever played. You think you're fucking clever? <laughs> yes. Oh, damn it! And this time, it's only $4 so only slightly more expensive than Tekken's frame data. And those are only games that are out right now. We currently have Mortal Kombat 1, Tekken 8, and Project L on the horizon. And with EVO breaking records this year, I feel like we're on the verge of a fighting game renaissance. And if you've made it this far and you still haven't taken the plunge, I hope you'll be there for it. Cause goddamn, these games are cool. My name is Punk Duck. Thanks for watching. I know the video's over, but I just realized I completely forgot about this fucking game. Uh, it, it's alright. It's super easy to pick up and play, it doesn't have motion inputs, although the latest update seems to have soured a lot of people on it. I wasn't gonna include it because I don't really like it, and some people don't even consider it a real fighting game. Although I think that's a bit harsh. Uh, but yeah, overall I wouldn't recommend Grand Blue Fantasy Versus.
Before I vanish, I'd like to thank my extremely gorgeous producers, which include Carson, Foggy Boy, That Man You Know, Death Before Retreat, and FP Earwig. And of course, my lovely patrons, which include Adventurer Huggles, Aaron Kresge, Blood Spear, BO713, Daniel Johnson, Grim Narwhal, Jeffrey R, Caraldo, Linus Sex Tips, Oliver Zakari, Oris104, Richard Brimley, and Susanna. You guys are so sexy. I appreciate all of your support. And as always, have a good one.